you've been studying through the book of Judges, you've probably noticed that Israel during that time was kind of like the wild, wild west. The common phrase, I believe it's used seven times in this book is, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. During this time, you've probably also noticed that the Lord used the most unusual people to bring order and to direct Israel back to the Lord and what was right in his eyes. Judges 11 produces another of these least likely candidates, Jephthah. He was from the land of Gilead, east of the Jordan, son of a harlot, driven out of his father's home because of it, and then ran with a rough group of renegades. Despite being cast out, Jephthah will later on be sought after by his own people to lead Israel against Ammon. And he'll go on to judge as a judge for Israel for six years. Controversy is always around a vow he made to the Lord in verse 30, that if the Lord would deliver the people of Ammon into his hands, then it would be that whatever comes out of the doors of his house to meet him, he would offer up to the Lord as a sacrifice. So after the victory and arriving home, his virgin daughter comes out to meet him and he offered her up to the Lord, keeping his vow to the Lord. Controversy for sure. I know that this book of Judges is amoral. It doesn't always depict whether or not someone does something right or wrong in their account. But we have to recognize that Jep, we'll call him Jep, is only one of four judges mentioned in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews. And human sacrifice was absolutely forbidden by the Lord in the law. So most likely Jep offered his daughter up to the Lord by means of consecration. Not, not to be married off and that she would serve in the tabernacle for life. This is better understood from the context of her lamenting her virginity in verse 38. Whatever the case, Jep went from renegade serving himself to judge serving the Lord, and even to a point of sacrifice of what he loved. God's faithfulness to use us unworthy characters for his glory has the tendency to produce faithfulness in us, doesn't it? Regardless of what type of character you are, the Lord Jesus has a beautiful plan for and wants to use you in mighty ways. Answer his call. Turn from doing what is right in your eyes to being more concerned with what's right in his eyes and what's right in his word. Honor the Lord. Be steadfast with your commitment to him and know that by his grace and Christ in you, you can do all things for the Lord. The Lord wants to use us today in our wild, wild west world of immorality. You are greatly loved. Go and greatly love.